All right, what's up, Blender Savages? So today I'm going to show you how to personalize an STL file from thingiverse.com. So you can uh, go ahead and customize it, put some text on it, put some letters on it. Uh, so I'm going to go over here with uh, a tablet stand. I'm going to type in tablet stand. I'm going to use it as a, as a phone stand, tablet stand. Uh, there's one here by somebody named Hal Lefornia. All right, so my thing over to perform a search for a tablet stand, and I want to use this one. This one's cool too, except uh, this bridge right here will create a bigger raft for when I 3D print it. But I'm going to use this one right here, so I'm going to 3D print these the bad boys. But I'm going to personalize them first. A little personal message on there. <clears throat> I'm going to personalize it along the uh, the flat surface. I'll put a name in there right here. And notice I'm not uh, going to do it over here around the curved area or anywhere that's curved. That will require curves, and that's a lot more challenging to use versus just plain text that we'll use to uh, insert here. All right, so download all files. <clears throat> so oftentimes when you're uh, in Thingiverse downloading a file, uh, it's compressed, so you'd have to extract it. It's in a zip folder, and then we have to open that up. All right, so it's done downloading right here. And I can't use this because it's uh, compressed, so I have to extract it, unzip it, and download folder. Yeah, that's fine. It can go there. Extract. And it's done. All right. It's extracted. Now I can use those files in there. And there's just one file. Sometimes you might have uh, something with multiple files. So there might be a picture in there of the object. And also there might be um, instructions in there, some sort of like note, uh, notepad document or Word document. All right. I'm going to delete the cube here. So it's selected right now. I know it's selected because it's a yellow glow. Anytime I click on something, it'll select it. If I left click it, it'll have a yellow glow. Let me know it's selected, yellow perimeter there, yellow outline. All right, so I want the cube here selected. X key delete, there we go. Now I'm gonna go over here to file, import. I'm gonna bring in this model. It's an STL file, so I'm gonna select STL. If it was a .obj, I would select <clears throat> .obj. Import STL right here. All right, get a file explorer window here, a file browser, and that's in my documents folder. So I'm gonna click on doc, uh, sorry, downloads, downloads folder. So I'm gonna click on downloads there and look for that file. It's right here inside this folder. I'm gonna double click it open. And I'm just gonna double click this file in here to bring it in. It's my STL model right there. There it is. So that's my tablet stand, it's humongous. Let me uh, spin the wheel on my mouse to zoom out. And there it is. If I wanna change my view around this, I'm gonna hold down the middle mouse button. I can rotate my view and me activate that tool so you guys can see it. There we go. Little mouse button, the spinner, and I can alternate my view around here. And on your file, on your model, it might come out rotated in a different orientation. Or when you bring it in, you might be inside of it. If you bring it in, you're like, what happened? So what you want to do is hit the decimal key on your number pad. Make sure number lock is on. And it'll zoom and center whatever you have selected. So right now, currently, this is selected. So decimal key, and it'll zoom and center it. And do this, decimal key, boom, oh, there it is, all right. So now I wanna edit this out. Uh, I wanna put text here, but I wanna clean up this model first. So I'm gonna take it to editing mode. With it selected, I can hit the tab key on my keyboard, upper left hand corner. And it's a toggle between edit mode and object mode. Also up here where it says object mode, I can click in there and select edit mode right there. All right, so SEO files have triangular faces, and over here you will not see one single square. Uh, where there would be a square, there'd be a, a diagonal across it to make two triangular faces there. So each of these uh, are triangles. So I'm going to get rid of those so I'm going to put text in here. And the tool I'm going to use to cut the text in there um, is going to have problems if I have these edges in there. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to convert as many of these as possible into squares. That's by holding out alternate and J, alt key and J. There we go. That's uh, trace to quads, and it converted some of them into squares. Not all of them, but some of them. See, there was one right there. It's gone. Let me redo. Control Z to undo. See, there it is. And if it'll turn to J, uh, that will disappear. Some will here will disappear, but not all. It's not perfect. There we go. All right, so now to get rid of some of these extra ones here that I really don't need. These are not vital for the structure of the uh, the model. I'm going to hit the X key. Make sure everything's selected. The whole thing should be glowing. Because if you left click on one thing, it's going to select that. So you select that little dot there, the little vertices, the vertex. So hit A to select all. There we go. And only this is in editing mode, so you don't got to worry about selecting the camera or the sun, which are inside of it right now, because this thing is humongous. I hit the X key to delete. And they're going to select limited dissolve. Make sure that you select this one, not any of these other ones. If you accidentally select vertices, everything will disappear. But just hit Control-Z, undo, and it'll come back. 
or a key to select all, X key, and limit it dissolve right here. Cool. All right, so now it's a lot cleaner. This is what I want. And so now to add my text, so I'm going to exit the uh, editing mode, back to object mode. And you go object mode, so you can always uh, check right there what view you're in, what mode you are in. So I'm going to bring in text. When I bring in the text, it's going to be super small. It's going to appear right here. Super small because the um, relatively, it's a lot smaller than this tablet stand here. So you can try scaling down the tablet stand or leave it as is. Later, you're going to resize it anyways when you uh, prepare it for 3D printing. All right, so to bring in text, you're going to shift A on your keyboard. And you get this admin, you can go down here to text. Or you can click add up here and then go down and you'll see text in there as well. So there's the add button. Uh, but I like to hit shift A, just a shortcut for convenience. And then click on text. If uh, you click on text there, you go up here and click on text again, and you're going to have two texts in there. I we'll have two texts in there. You can't see them right now, but if you want to see, hit seven on the number pad, and then the uh, the decimal key on the number pad, and it'll zoom and center it. There it is. And uh, there's it looks like there's only one, but there's actually two. If you go up here, there's your outliner. This is everything we have here in our scene. There's our camera, our light, our tablet stand, and the two texts there. So I'm going to. Click on this one, it's already selected. I know it's selected because it's yellow. Uh, don't depend on that blue outline, the blue highlight. You wanna go with the yellow text. So that's yellow there. I'm hit the delete key on my keyboard. There it is, deleted. So now I only have this one left. So I wanna select it, I can left click it here. Or I can also left click it in here. It's already selected, see? So I click the tablet stand there, tablet stand lights up. I click on text here, the text will light up. There it is, all right. So I wanna type something in here. Uh, to do that, I also have to take this to editing mode, to edit mode. So hit the tab key or go up here and go to edit mode. There we go. See that? There's a insertion point right there, insertion point. You can hit backspace and type something else in. There we go. Let me zoom out. <clears throat> there we go. I can continue typing, but you don't want to put like a whole paragraph in there because you're not going to be able to fit it inside that, uh, inside the side of that, of that tablet. Um, if you do manage to fit, it's going to be so small, you won't be able to read it. All right, so there's one savage in there. And now I'm done. So now I'm going to exit here from here. I'm going to hit the tab key. There we go. I'm back on object mode. So I was in editing mode to type in the text. So if I want to change it, I can always go back in there. If you got a typo, you can go in there. <clears throat> object mode, all right. Um, we can go in there before you convert it to, to mesh, because right now this is a text, it's a text object. And this big tablet's a mesh object. So this is different. I can manipulate this all kinds of ways. I can pull this forward in and out. I can scale this up and down. I can change the color of it. I can do all kinds of stuff. With the text, I can't do that right now. I can make it a little thicker, I can move it around, but I can't uh, reformat or edit as much as I can with the, with the tablet. So I'm gonna convert this to a mesh. So make sure your spelling is correct there. Uh, your, your case is uppercase, lowercase, whatever. Make sure you're fine with the, with the grammar in there and then convert it into mesh. So make sure it's selected. Then all you do is right click it and you're gonna go down here, convert to mesh. And the note is a symbol here will change for it. This is a symbol for mesh. Symbol for light, symbol for camera, and here's a symbol for a curve object. I'm gonna right click it and convert to mesh. Cool, so now it's a symbol for mesh. Now it is mesh. So now I'm gonna take it to uh, edit mode again. So I'm at the tab key. There it is. So I also have lots of triangular faces, and that will get in the way of the cut I'm gonna use later so I can cut it into my, uh, my tablet sense. So I'm gonna A to select all. There we go. And now I'm gonna hit the X key. And select limited dissolve. It's going to get rid of these extras that are all in here. Cool. All right. So now I want to thicken this up. See, it's just really flat. It's not really going to do much for me like that. If you 3D printed, that's not going to work well. So my number pad, I'm going to hit three on, num on um, my number pad for right view. It'll give me the right view of it. So I'm looking at it from the right. Let me zoom back in. All right. Three on the number pad for right view. Make sure your, um, your entire text there is selected. Hit A to select all. Go back three for uh, right view. I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to make it thicker. I'm going to hit E, one for one blender unit, then enter. There we go. If I zoom out, you can see here that it's a one big grid mark from there to there. That's how much I extruded it by. There you go. There's my text. It's nice and thick now. It's three dimensions, not this flat sheet that I had earlier. Back to three for right view. And make sure you three on the number pad for right view. And while I'm in right view, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees but not as it is right now, because I have to select everything. So hit A to select all, because if I rotate right now, it's only going to rotate the top, and I don't want to do that. So hit A first. There we go, I got everything selected. Now I'm going to rotate it over by 90 degrees. R, nine, zero. I can tell I flipped it in the wrong direction right now. So I'm going to hit minus, 
or negative, then enter. And try it again. Control Z. So it's R minus nine zero enter. There we go. So let me look at it from here. Cool. So from here is backwards. That's okay. Because I'm gonna put it over here. Then I'll make another one. I'll put it over there. All right. So I got that going there for me. If you want to flip it the other way, it's gonna be R, and then Z is up and down. Hit Z. 180, and you can put it back in that direction. Let me right click to turn that off. I'm gonna put this one over here. All right, so I'm at the tab key, seven for top view. Tab key, I'm back to object mode. All right, so I'm back in object mode. I cleaned it up, I rotated. Uh, see that little yellow dot right there? That's the uh, origin or orientation point or pivot point of your object. So if I try rotating, it's gonna rotate with respect to that pivot point there. See, kind of like a door hinge. Let's see, or Y. It's rotating from that little pivot point there. So I want to put it in the center. That way it's easier to control instead of having to worry about that corner. So I'm just going to right click it. You go to set origin. Set origin is center of mass volume by volume. And there it is. Now it's a little more center. All right, seven for top view. And I'm going to bring this down here. I'm going to hit S for scale first, make it a little bigger. S, then pull the mouse away, and then left click. Not S, left click, nothing happens. So S. Move the mouse away and then left click. Make sure when you do this, um, have your object somewhere, so have your mouse cursor somewhere near your object. Hit S and pull away. Want to make something bigger? Have your mouse near your object, hit S and then pull away and it'll make it bigger. To turn off the tool, just right click. If you make it too big, if it's like this, just position your mouse uh, away from your object, but it's still inside the 3D view window. Hit S and then move the mouse inward. There we go. All right, so I want to put this over here. And I can tell this is 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit R. And I'm in the top view. So I'm going to hit Z, just in case I'm not in top view. And then 45, enter. I'm going to hit G for grab on my keyboard. G. I'm moving the mouse, having clicked. And then I'm going to left click once I'm in here on this side. There we go. Let me hit the decimal key there. All right, zoom in center. So I got half of it here inside of the, inside of the tablet set. Let me zoom out. Now I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button. I'm going to push it down, not spin it, and I can see it from here. All right, I'm going to zoom in. And about half of it's down there at the bottom, so I'm going to hit G for grab, and then Z, Z for zero, so I can pull it straight up. There we go. Now I'm going to scale it up from here. I'm going to S for scale, pull the mouse away, make it a little bigger. Cool. All right, I want to slide it more this way to the left. If I do it from here, it's going to come off, off of it. And, oh, cool, it didn't come off. But just in case... Oh, it did come off a little bit. I'm in seven for top view. Then I'm in G for grab and just pull it down over here. And then left click whenever you feel comfortable with the location. Middle mouse button. All right, not bad. Cool, so I'm gonna use this one to cut through here. And then I'm gonna make another one. I'll put it on this side and that one would be um, embossed. So this one's gonna be engraved, it's gonna cut a hole. And the other one will be embossed on the other side. So I'm gonna duplicate this one first before I start cutting it out. Shift D and just move the mouse over here. So remember that was 45 degrees. So R, Z, 4, 5, enter. Oops, undo. R, Z, minus 4, 5, enter. There we go. I want to see it from that side over there. So I'm at 1 for front view. And this to see the opposite side. It's going to be 9. Of whatever view you're on, just hit 9 on the number pad. And you'll get the opposite there. There it is. G for grab. Position it there. So now, so now I need to flip it 180 degrees along the Z axis. So that's R, Z, 180, enter. There we go. All right, so I got that position there. Let me double check. Seven for top view on the number pad. Let me zoom out a bit. All right, so now I got to have it penetrate the, uh, the tablet here. So I'm going to G for grab and just pull it in. And depends how much of it you want to stick out. I don't want to go all the way through. Because this one, um, I'm going to have it join the tablet. And I just want it to pop up through here on the side. Not the inside. I mean, the inside is going to be backwards. It's not going to make sense there. Seven for top view. So that looks good there. If you still want to make it uh, thinner, hit S for scale. Uh, actually, before you hit S, you want to see what direction you want to make it thinner by. So let's say you want to make it thinner from here to here. So you want to look at uh, what line we have here. That's the Y. So don't click on this. It's going to change your view. Watch out for that. So it's going to be S and then Y. You can pull the mouse inward to make it thinner or the mouse way to make it longer. Let's see. So right there. And then G. Oops, I hit H by accident. That means it hides it. And it's over here. See that eyeball right there? It's got to open it up. 
There we go. All right, so let me select it again. GY, I can pull it in some more. There we go. So I want to see what it looks like over there. So I can hold down the middle mouse button and just rotate my view and uh, orbit my way over here. There we go. So that looks good. Let's see one for front view and then nine for opposite view. Maybe I can want to put it over here somewhere. There we go. That's cool. All right. Uh, and this one over here, I'm going to use it to cut out, to cut a hole in there, a functional hole in there. And it's not going to go all the way through because if it does go all the way through, let me show you guys here. You don't want the mesh to go all the way through. Because then when you 3D print this, there's nothing there to support the triangles inside the A's. And so you're just going to have a big giant triangle there with like two legs. So watch out for that. Also like the O's, that are O's, you're going to want to watch out for that. All right. So I just hit Control Z to undo that move. All right. So I'm going to select the tablet here. So select your tablet. And now I'm going to go over here to this side on the right. And I am going to select this wrench right here. This is for modifiers. All right. So make sure you're doing this while only your tablet is selected. Nothing else should have an outline, only your tablet should have that yellow outline there. I clicked on the wrench, then I'm gonna click on add modifier. And I get this big menu here, I'm gonna select Boolean right here. Second column from left, third from top, bam, okay. And what I wanna do is select the object that I want to, to do the cutting. So if I click in here, I have two options, and both of those are my text that I already have in there. Uh, if you're not sure which one's which, then click on the little sampler here, the pipe it, the um, the eyedropper, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to click on it one time, and now my mouse is that. And I can use it to sample the one I want to use to do the cutting, which is this one right here. Hover over it, and it gives me the name of it. So I'm going to left click it there, and the name will pop up in there once I left click it. Left click it. Cool, I sampled it there. That's the name of this text there. All right, so we cut a hole through there. I can't see it right now because that's taking the space of what got cut. So I'm going to go over here on this check mark right here, the chevron, next to the X. Not the X, because then you close this and you have to uh, do this again. So I'm just going to click here on the little arrow here, the little chevron, and then click Apply to apply this. Cool. All right, so I applied it. So that cut a hole in there. So now I just got to delete this one here. So select like the text that did the cutting. X key to delete it, and delete OK. Yes, I'm going to click in there. And boom, there it is. I cut a hole in there. And there it is, savage. All right, and then this one over here is a separate object. So I want to join it with this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on it, hold on the shift key, and then click on the tablet. There we go. They should both have a glowing outline on them. So my tablet's yellow. This one is uh, orange. That just depends on the order that you selected them. Uh, whichever one you select last can have a yellow glow. For this activity, it's not too important which one has the glow and which one doesn't. So now I'm going to join them together. That's Control J, and it'll make them one object. Notice here they're two separate objects, and right here they got two different colors. Control and then J at the same time. There we go. Hold down Control and hit J. It'll join them. Now I have one object there, and now there's only one glow here for the, everything there. All right, so now I want to get this ready for 3D printing. So there's a toolbox uh, called the 3D printing toolbox I got to bring in into Blender. I've hit the N key for Nancy. Uh, mine's right here. Yours is probably not there, so I'll show you how to activate it. I'm going to go over here to Edit, and then I'm going to go down to Preference. So upper left hand corner, click on Edit. And then from that drop down menu, select preferences. And you get your blender preferences window. And try to bring it over here. All right. And you might be on interface by default if it's your first time using it. So you're going to go over here to add ons. And then you're going to use a search bar right here. You're going to click in there. Type in 3D. And then enter. And it's this one right here. You want to click inside this box to add a check mark. So you should have a check mark there. If not, click in there. And then you'll be able to access the, uh, the menu there. So click on that box to activate it. And then all you got to do is close it. So make sure the check mark there, close it, and now it's going to be there. Hit the end key for Nancy and see if you have a 3D print tab in there. If I uh, don't have this selected, hit end key for Nancy. It might not appear. I think they uh, fixed it in this version of Blender. But in other versions, if you didn't have your uh, mesh selected, your object, it will not show that 3D print toolbox are visible. So if it's there right now, 3D print, click in there. And make sure your, um, your tablet stand is selected. Now we're going to clean it up. I'm going to click on check all. And it tells me all the little errors that are wrong with it. So now we're going to try to fix them. Click on clean up. Click on distorted. And in the lower right hand corner, it'll tell you if it fixes anything. Distorted. All right. Six faces. The triangulated six faces. So made it um, similar to an SEO file for 3D printing. So now if I go to edit mode, it's going to have triangular faces that weren't there before. But that's okay. I want those there. I want those there now. I didn't want them there earlier when I was bringing in the text. All right, so now make manifold. This will make it watertight, waterproof. Fill in any holes that I have in there. Cool. So uh, 
deleted uh, an edge and a face in there. All right, that's good. All right, so now it's ready for 3D printing. I just got to save my project. So I'm going to file, save as. This is just for my Blender file, uh, tablet for YouTube video. I should probably put tablet stand in there. There we go. Desktop, that's okay. Save as. All right, and that's just your Blender file. That file I cannot print. I cannot 3D print what I just saved. That's just a project file, so I can go back and work on this again if I want to make any changes. Now, the one that I want for 3D printing, uh, I'm going to have to export it out as an STL. So first, I'm going to right-click here my tablet. I can give it a name. Right here, Rhenium Active Object. Right now, it's called Tablet Stamp. And I can uh, add more to it. I'll put on there uh, Savage Tablet Stamp. There we go. Enter. And I'm going to click on Export right here. I can export this tablet stand on its own as a STL file. I'm going to click on this folder so I can tell it where to go to. I can't name it in here. I just named it just now. So um, this is not for naming. That's uh, it's supposed to be for naming, but that does not have an, a naming option. That was earlier when we right-clicked the tablet. So accept. It's going to go to the desktop. You can choose a different location here, a different folder to export it to. And uh, this is a little slow, so let's just wait here patiently. There we go. And it's still not exported. I just chose the location. Now I'm going to export it. That you're going to leave alone. You don't want to change the format. You want to leave it as an STL because that will be uh, recognizable by most slicing software, including MakerBot Print. Export. Bam. All right. So that's done. So I'm going to go over here to MakerBot. I'm going to bring this in. Let me go to File. Insert File. And that's on my desktop. I got a few files in here. And is this some sort of alphabetical order? Let's see, tablet stand for YouTube video .stl right here. Not this one, that's the original model I brought in. This is the one I just edited right now that I saved. So that's the name of my Blender file and the name that I give the tablet stand, Savage Tablet Stand, double click it in. All right, uh, it's in there, you can't see it, but it's humongous, let me zoom out. There it is, see? So I'm gonna scale it down, make it smaller. I'm gonna click inside this right here. This is the scale tool in the toolbar in MakerBot Print. And right now it's 20, uh, almost 24 inches tall. Let me go with the 2 inches tall. Enter. It's going to scale it down, but it's going to take it off the build plate. So I'm going over here to arrange. And then arrange the build plate. All right, cool. So there it is. Still too big. I'll play around with that in a bit. Uh, first, you want to select the correct printer that you want to slice it in. So I'm going to go with the Replicator Mini Plus. Uh, the Replicator Plus is a bigger printer. I can print out a bigger tablet stand. But the bigger the tablet stand that I make, the more likely it is going to warp. So I'm going to make a smaller one. Uh, it's going to be for a phone. I'm not going to try to print one out for a tablet because that will definitely be a felt print. If you do not see Replicator Mini Plus in there, you can click on Add a Printer. Add an unconnected printer. And then you can choose your, um, your printer type there. So if you're in my 3D printing class, we just have these two, Replicator Plus and Replicator Mini Plus. There we go. All right, and then click on the Chevron here. Tuck that away. All right. So navigate in here to orbit like I'm doing now. You got to hold down the right mouse button. All right, so it's selected. I'm going to go over here to scale. And let me scale it down some more. So the X, that's the length here. I know that's 10 inches long. That's humongous. So let me try uh, let me try 2 or 3 inches in that direction. Let's go with 2.5. Enter. Every time I scale, it throws it off the, the build plate, as you can see. So I have to go back to arrange. And arrange build plate, and I'll put it in the center. Cool. So that seems to fit in there. I can try to push my luck, make it a little bigger. So let me try three inches along the X. Cool, still fits in there. All right. So now I got that there. If you want to change the uh, orientation on it, so you want to rotate it, you can go to rotate here. But this is fine. I'm going to print it out just like this. Uh, remember, it prints out in layers. I could also try standing it up and print it out that way as well. That's going to be a little bit of a hassle with the orient. All right, notice this is all grayed out. That's because I have nothing selected. So I have to select my tablet stand again. Here we go. And now I'm going to go to Arrange, Arrange the build plate, put it in the center, and then Arrange build plate again. And on the Y here, Move Y, I'm going to hit the plus on the Y, so I keep moving it back towards the rear. All right, so I'm going to move it away from the front of the build plate. If you have a MakerBot printer, a Replicator Plus, a Replicator Mini, because this is the warmest spot on the printer right here. Uh, if I put it over here towards the left, and, uh, it's going to cool off faster, you're going to get warpage, you're going to get a felt print. All right, so I got the red box there telling me it's outside of the boundaries, the build chamber, so I'm going to hit minus right here. Now I'm just going to play around with these settings and try to get closer to that 58 that I had over there, 57. Cool, so 57 was the magic number there. Cool, all right, so that looks good. I can put a phone in there. 
Um, if it doesn't fit in there, it should still be able to stand it up somewhat. And I can still try to push my leg and make it a little bigger, but then I have to uh, rearrange it and everything again. So I'm going to go to print settings here. And this from another class, so I'm going to change that. It's supposed to be, oh yeah, 10% is fine. That's the default setting there. And I'm just going to click on reset settings to default. And I think they already are uh, resetted because I don't need these additional features um, that I added in there. Uh, the one I do need to change is right here, supports, breakaway support, and support under bridges in case I have any bridges there um, or overhanging parts. So I definitely have overhanging parts inside the text in there. And then these letters here that, ticks, that stick out. So definitely activate uh, breakaway support and support under bridges to improve the uh, likelihood of a successful print. And all of this should remain as is. Uh, just the default settings there as they are, and that's good. So I'm going to slice it. I'm going to click on SMS and print preview to create my 3D slicing instructions. Let's see. Now just wait. It takes a moment. So mine is done. I can play the animation to see how it looks like, see how it'll print. There it is. So first it builds a raft, that yellow part down there. Helps it stick to the build plate. And then all the green stuff is my actual model. So it's all just one filament color. But that's just there to distinguish it from the other parts. You can see how it, uh, it'll print it out. There's the gaps in there for my text inside of it, the engraved text, and then there's uh, the, the text sticking out for the embossed text. Let me uh, speed this up all the way to the top. Oh, I didn't pause it. Let me pause it there. And I'll bring it all the way to the top there. Cool. I get a preview there of the final product. Ooh, one more layer in there. How many layers? That's almost there. All right, so that looks cool. Nice 3D print. So now I just got to save it. So I'm going to go to File, uh, Save As, Save Project As. And I can save this project here. Tablet Stand MK File. MK, that's the display maker bot, does it? A maker bot. Now, Tablet Stand for YouTube video. I'll just name it like that. That's going to give me a, a .print file save. So that's my project file here for MakerBot print. So I can go back and make changes. Let's say I want to make it bigger or rotate it so it prints out like in a, so it's sending up like a V. And now for the actual instructions, that's going to be an export right here. I'll close a fast print only an hour and five minutes. Doesn't use that much filament. Export. And then this is the actual 3D printing instructions right here that'll 3D print my, my file here. Tablet stand for YouTube video. And just delete this back part here. There we go. And then save. And now I can use that uh, 3D print. And so there it is. I'm done. Just got to print this bad boy out. And it's ready to hold my phone. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. You can help support the channel by subscribing, liking, adding a comment, uh, hitting the notification bell, sharing, anything else. Have a wonderful day.